Hello there, and thank you for joining me today. I'm Doris Venter of Library Arts, and I'm here to walk you through a wonderful winter drawing of a cardinal on a branch in the snow. You will need some very simple supplies, copy paper, pencil, color pencils, and if you wanna get this special little snow flake falling effect, a little white paint, a brush, and a little toothbrush or nail brush to create the splatter effect. So let's get started with the drawing of the bird and the branches for our composition. And I'll walk you through each step. See you in a minute. Okay, so to start our drawing, our cardinal in winter drawing today, you're gonna need a sheet of copy paper, but we're gonna actually cut this down into a square that measures eight inches by eight inches. So it's very easy, you just get yourself a ruler, measure it out, trim off a little excess of the paper, and you'll be good to go. Now I have a, created a, <clears throat> A drawing that shows the composition of our cardinal in winter image. So we have the cardinal here surrounded and framed in by these branches. We're going to start with a cardinal and then we're going to build the branches around, add color and of course snow. And then uh, the secret special thing we're going to do at the very end is we're going to take a little bit of white paint, a nail brush, and we're gonna give it a gentle splatter to look like snow is falling over the image. So it's really gonna be lovely. So I'm going to leave this here as a quick guide to help me get you through your drawing faster. That way we have more time to work right into the color. So I'm going to put that there. You may use pencil and eraser. I'm going to use marker because for me it's faster and easier for you to see what I'm doing if I do it in marker. Now, if you want to go over your drawing with marker afterwards, that is fine. So why don't we get started? We're gonna start with the cardinal, as I said, because we want to work with the central figure and then work the framing elements of the uh, branches around the cardinal's body. So let's start up here at the top and we're just going to start with a rough, triangular head on the cardinal. And that's really a big fluffed up, almost like a headdress on top of the cardinal's head. So think of a triangle, but make it a little bit rougher. Now we're gonna come down a little bit, and now we're gonna add another triangle. That triangle is going to be the bird's beak. So before we split that into the bird's beak, let's just close in the edges of the beak we're gonna come down, cross down, around, just sort of a little bit of a bumpy line, and then we're gonna to go to the point and just take a line inward. So already you're seeing the bird take shape. Now, cardinals traditionally have this black mask over their eyes. So we're gonna come down a little bit at a diagonal, come around, sort of like a ghost shape, like a ghost head, and then we're gonna make a bumpy line down and then come in just a little bit. Now we have room to build the bird's body, which I'm going to make very curved, but I'm going to kind of do it in a bumpy line, because again, we want to emphasize the feathery, the feathery texture of the bird's body. Now we're going to come around to this side, and it's going to be a very large round shape, but again, with a little bumpiness along the way, so curve your way down, and come across and up and stop. So you have this big, rounded, fluffed out body for the winter snow. We're gonna leave a space here for the branch. We're gonna come down, make a little bit of a bumpy line here for the bird's tail. And then there's going to be another portion of the tail right here. So we're gonna come down, around, and up and stop. Again, we're leaving a little room there for the um, tail, and we're actually gonna continue that line up. Now we're gonna take um, 
a moment to put the two legs in for the bird. So we'll come down with two little verticals here and here. Look at they're about an inch apart. We're gonna curve over and back for each claw and we're gonna give him three claws or her. One, two, three. And giving it that curve really makes it look like it's grabbing onto the branch. Now up here for the eye, we're just going to put um, a circle and then we're going to color in a dark portion like that. Okay, so we know where the, where the legs are. Let's connect the two legs with a branch, just like that. Continue the branch through and underneath the claws so it comes out on either side like that. Now, come down near the, the tail of the bird and then again down. That's again part of the branch. Now we're gonna take the branch up past the tail and over to the edge of the paper and down past the tail and stop. So now we're gonna echo that line by bringing the other half of the branch in and down, and we're just gonna pull that tail up a little bit. And now we're gonna continue this in an arch, a little gentle arch and a little gentle arch. Now the branch is gonna split here. So we're gonna come down and out to make a skinny little branch and stop. And we're gonna make a fork here. So we're gonna come down, stop, and branch out to put some red berries on our branch. So there's one red berry, come down with another thin branch. So it's a little fork of branching going on. And now this is gonna fork out a little bit more too. So we're gonna start here, bring it down, very deep little valley line and off the page. And we're gonna take this one more upwards, again, bumpy. So we have one branch going up and one branch going down. Let's echo this branch back, stop. Echo this branch back and stop. So again, we're gonna have room to do two more branches, one coming out here all the way off the page, little bumpiness there, and one more branch coming over here and back and stopping there. So you already have three branches plus this one branch moving upwards. We're gonna add a berry on the end of this branch. And let's continue the branches up here, then we'll come back and finish down there, okay. So let's come back over here. This is gonna be part of this really overarching, it's gonna be like a rainbow shape arching over the bird. We're gonna come out to a point. We're going to take that line up and arch it in a bumpy way and stop. Take it, echo that line and stop because we're gonna divert some branches over here to the side. Let's go to the side to echo a branch there, bring one in, bring one in, but leave that space there because we're gonna take some branches upwards. Now, as I go, you may wanna stop the video so you, and here's a V branch, can catch up on your branch work, okay? So I'm gonna put a berry here going off the page and a berry here almost going off the page. So this branch is now gonna continue over here and it's gonna divide off again, like branches normally do. So I'm gonna do it very bumpy. I'm gonna come up here and we're gonna end up with a V. We're gonna echo back and that gives us an opportunity to continue that branch over here. And now we can create two more little branches coming down like this and Here's another V in the branches and add two little berries on the end of these branches. Let's echo this branch over here and start this one down here. Now, it's more branching outwards. We're gonna come up the hill, down the hill, up again and add a berry. Then of course we have to bring it back 
we're going to make a V right there and echo back the branch. Now let's head down here, stop, echo that branch, stop, take a little branch off to the side here and a little branch off to the side here, kind of pointing downwards, upwards I mean. So one's going down, one's going up. Come down, add a berry there. Here comes another branch, add a berry on the end. And now we can go off the page with both of those. Now up here, we do have one extra branch. I should have left a space, but I didn't. But if you're working in pencil, you can easily draw that back in. So make an arch and just have that branch in. So we're already almost done with this. Let's come down here. We never did finish that tail, did we? So let's take it up here. And now we have a finished cardinal tail. So now we're just gonna do some fun little um, drawings of branches here. And here we're gonna put a little symbolic heart in. So we're going to come over here, making a bumpy heart shape. Now come inside, add a berry there, a berry here, and then take that over there. See how that makes a little bit of a heart shape there? Now we're gonna take this branch over in an arch, go back in an arch, finishing off that heart shape, add a berry on the bottom, come down and to the left in a bumpy line, come down and to the right, and then up with a berry, and down to the paper. So we just have a little bit more to do here and your drawing's gonna be done. We're gonna come up, we're gonna stretch over and make a thin little branch that comes back. We're gonna go up, across, and down. So there you have it. That is basically your composition. So the next video, we're gonna to start to color in our cardinal then we'll work on the branches and then we'll work on the background. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, welcome back. So at this point, we have created our composition using a pencil and tracing over it with black marker if you chose to do that. And now we're ready to move on to color. So this is gonna be a very simple color palette. We're gonna have a range of really pretty reds and red oranges for our cardinal. So the more reds you have to choose from, and I have quite a few here, some are in the uh, cherry red, some are in the wine red, some are in the red orange range, that would be great. You're also gonna want uh, a few browns for the branches, maybe even a dark forest green like I have here. You're also gonna use the red and the berries, and you're gonna want some grays for your background. But as we get to each portion of the picture, I will stop and go over the colors you need. So let's focus on the subject of our picture, which is our cardinal. Now cardinals are a brilliant red, but we're gonna use lighter reds to really punch out and make the bird feel more 3D here. We're gonna use a little bit of shadowing in the tail and the feather, the wing feather here and of course a rich dark black around the eyes and some orange in the beak. So what I would like to do is put down a base color of red. Now I don't want you to get the brightest red. I want you to get a red that is in the red orange or medium red. So let me just show you, this to me is a really nice base color or something like this, which is very close, but a little bit more red in it. I like this because it's a little bit brighter. Or this one. So you can see these are pretty similar. This one has a little more pink in it. So you can kind of see the different colors and how they look to see you know, which one makes the most sense. The first one to me seems like a really good way to start. So I'm gonna take that red and I'm going to lightly apply it 
And I am using colored pencil, so you know, you can push hard and get a much darker color, but I want this to be like a base color for the bird so that then I can build up more color as I move along. So let me just put light pressure, big strokes, filling in the bird's body, except for where he's very black, just to get started. Of course, when you do a picture like that, you're kind of interested in doing the background first, but I'm doing it because I think he is the central focal point and it's gonna be good to see how he's going to, or she's going to look. Actually, it would be a he, right? Because the male cardinals have more color than the females. It's good to get him blocked in before we start adding more color on top. And this becomes a color that kind of peeks through the layers and it's easier to build up the reds if you have a light base red. It's like when you paint a wall. If you had a purple wall and you decided you wanted to go to like a beige, you wouldn't just put beige over that wall. You would put a primer coat to neutralize the purple before you would go in to add a new color on top. Otherwise, you really wouldn't have a very successful paint job. You'd end up having to put more coats of paint to cover up that purple. Okay, so we have this base color. Now we can come in with a color, and I think this is the one I wanted, that's a little bolder. And we're just going to start to build it up right here. Now rather than use black to create the shadow that I see in the feathers here, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out an indigo blue because that blue is going to really show a better, um, this is a beautiful indigo, it's going to show shadow better than the black. So I'm just going to lightly apply it and you want to make sure it's very, very light. You want that shadowing, but you don't want it to dominate. You want it to just give a little bit of color. So let's keep going down, applying medium pressure this time, because we might want to put other colors on top. Medium pressure. So we really start to block in the bird and its beautiful red feathers. Now there is gonna be some more darker shadows over in this area, but we're still blocking in the red before we get to that. Now we're gonna go back to that original red I had, and we're gonna to try to stick to a slightly, you see how the colors are a little bit different? This is a little brighter, and we definitely want it to be brighter in the belly area. So what we're gonna do is we're going to lighten up, brighten up, colors right here and go back to the darker red to kind of frame in that large bright belly that we see there. So we want that darker red as I said framing it in. We don't want it to um, really be in the center. So keep that lighter red in the center and bring that darker red around it so that red has a chance to pop out a bit the way we want the belly to do. Okay, now we're also going to be adding some color over here, this is the shadowy part that I told you was gonna come in and you really, 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 really wanna go light here. Really light. And we can put more red on it, but we want to keep it light. And then we can put red on top of that blue, bring the red down here. Cause again, we're gonna go darker here. We're not gonna go with the lighter colors, gonna be much grayer 
and darker with the red in the tail feathers. And we can go ahead and start <clears throat> putting some of these shadowy colors right into the tail feathers, coming out from the branch, down here, like so, and up. and maybe even darken it where the two overlap a bit. Then right up here, we're gonna have some more, and then we're gonna to want to leave a little room also for snow. So I'm not gonna go too dark there. Um, here, where the feather's coming into the body, we want to continue that a bit. Just blending that in. Also, you're gonna to wanna to take some red and you're gonna to wanna to make some of those feathers maybe come out a little bit. Maybe give it a little bit of a feathery feel there. Okay. Now, um, let's get into some black. I think you're eager to probably get that black in there that really sets off the cardinal space because we know that the cardinal does not have a white, the black mask that really sets off the red so beautifully. I'm gonna color around the eye very carefully. We don't, we, the eye is almost gonna blend right in to the mask you can see very little of the eye okay and then now we can move to an orange for the beak right here and you might even want to take some of that darker red and just add a bit of red into that like that beautiful now the uh, foot right here is going to be black. Make that very, very black. Like that. And we also have a little bit of the uh, the feathers here that I neglected. So let me go back, put that in. and add the required shadowing that I use with my, my blue. Here, here, right in the crook of the tree, we're gonna put some shadowy lines coming down here and like that. And we may add more darkness later but we're gonna stop right there. In fact, you know what, I'm gonna take a little bit of the red away here, just a little bit, because I wanna leave a little room for some snow. It's okay if there's a little bit of pink in there when we add the snow later, but let's just take a little bit away so we can put some snow in there later. Okay, great. Now that we have the bird almost ready, we just need to add a little light shading around the belly area to show off the roundness of that belly and a little bit more shading up here. So we're going to go back to that indigo blue. If you don't have an indigo blue, just use black, but go super, super light. Super, super light is key here. So again, this is going to emphasize that bright belly by putting a little bit of shading and shadow down here, especially around the legs, and then going out into there. So here, we're going to have some shading in here, 
and it's going to start going in towards the head. The shade mark should come in slightly towards the face and lightly down here, just lightly. Again, we're really trying to keep the focus on that bright belly, but use a little bit of shading to brighten that belly and make it pop out. So let's get back in here, put a little bit more bright red in here where the belly is. Maybe even go over some of that shadow because you can go right over the black with this. A little bit more black here, here, more darkness. And a little bit more shading in there. Again, letting that just tiny bit of shading in here, not much. Tiny, tiny bit like that. Let's leave the bird like that for now. We can come back to the bird and we can add more. In the next video, we're going to do the branches, add a little snow and the berries, and then we'll turn our attention to the sky. Let's stop here. See you in a minute. Okay, so we're going to turn our attention to the branches. So we're going to color in the branches, and then we're going to come over on many of the branches with a layer of snow that's not going to be white like you think it's going to have multiple colors involved but let's just get into the branches so you're going to want to have a couple browns uh maybe a little bit of gray and a little bit of green and then afterwards you will come back to your reds probably these darker and lighter reds for your berries but let's just let's just get into um the branches and again we're just going to kind of put a couple different browns down, a little light brown, a little dark brown. It doesn't have to be one color. I like to layer more than one. Did you notice what we did down here? Remember the heart? Wasn't that fun? That wasn't in my original source, but I wanted to put it in there as a kind of special little detail, so I did. And you can have fun hiding little images if you want to. That's certainly a choice that I made and you can make as well. And I'm also going to come in here with just a little dark green to deepen it a little, but not everywhere. Just, just a little bit. And then come back in and finish up by layering some darker brown. And you're going to be able to go through, in a simil similar method, I would use a couple different browns, fill in all of your branches throughout your picture. I'm working with a warm brown and a more chocolatey brown. And then I'm putting a little of the forest green in as well. Because again, I like the element of a little bit of green Sometimes I'll even put in a little bit of gray, like a dark gray like this, and blend that in as well. So I'm gonna get you started with your picture. You see how I'm holding my pencils in one hand so I can switch quickly uh, between colors? That's the way I like to do it. I like to have several pencils in my hand so I can build up the color little by little as I switch and fill in the branches. So they're going to be nice and dark branches. They're not going to be pale. Um, so I'm going to finish up this little bit here again. before we move to adding snow on top. And then in terms of the berries, I would use a darker red than you used before 
but blend that with a lighter red. So you get a nice dimensional berry and not just, you know, um, one, one color. You can also go back in with the blue indigo and add a little shadow every time it comes near the branch. You can just put a little shadow in there. So I'm gonna let you continue with your branches all over the picture. And then when you come back, using the mixture of browns, I want you to deepen the colors, color in the berries, and then we'll talk about the snow. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, how did you do with your berries and your branches? Dark browns, some greens, some grays mixed in, and beautiful berries. And I hope you took a moment, and if you haven't, you can still do that, to take a little bit of blue, to add a little shadow to parts of the berries. Now we're gonna move into adding um, snow. Now snow, you're obviously gonna think of white, and there are definitely some white touches, but most of the snow is actually gonna be in a pale gray with touches of beige, light brown, periwinkle blue, and a tiny bit of pink. So I want you to focus on that light gray first. And what I want you to do is just to very lightly start indicating where you think the snow is going to go. Just little, think about on top of each branch, little bits of snow and just little soft lines that just sit on top of the branch a little. Then you can come in, you can add some white in there, although it's not going to totally whiten everything up. You can add a little bit of the beige, a little bit of the tan. Snow is so rarely a perfect white. And then in here where we originally, where I originally wanted to put snow, I'm gonna go over that in gray first and come up here with more snow. And again, I'm just using a circle, um, technique with my uh, pencil to suggest snow and then I'm going to come in with the white and really try to brighten it up where I goofed before putting just the bird's feathers in there and then I'm going to try to detail it by bringing in this is where that beautiful blue you can build in the beautiful blue color and up here a bit, that beautiful blue can come in at the base of the snow. You can put more white and you can put more beige. And then we're gonna put a little bit of pink. And that pink's gonna help transition us into the bird. Now, in order to make that bird's tail feathers really stand out. We're gonna really, really darken the red where it got in, there like that. And again, I'm going to use a little bit of a black color pencil too to just define the snow a little bit. Just give it a little definition as we go along here like that. Just to help define where the snow is coming in and that way when we do the gray later, it will really show up nicely. So I'm gonna go over here, blend those colors in, take some of that blue, and we're gonna try to really cover up that line. There we go, almost gone, and there we go. And then here, we're going to, um, again, touch it up with more white and then we're gonna keep going. So here's some more snow, and I'm gonna blend that blue edge out with the white a little bit, so it softens that snow edge, like that. And then we're gonna come up here. There's gonna be a little snow up here again, just like we had a moment ago, up here, all climbing up on top of these branches, very pale gray, that I'm going to then put some of the white on to brighten it up. 
What's really going to make the snow stand out is when we add the sky in. When we add that sky in, it's really going to show up beautifully. We're going to put some blue again near the base of the branch. Adds a little bit of a shadow as it settles on the branch there. that and we're gonna get some more snow over here coming down this branch get the gray in there a little bit again and we're also gonna want some of that pretty blue also coming in just underneath the snow okay here comes more snow again using a circular motion to apply the snow again it's not going to show up until we really start blocking in the um the sky which we'll be doing next we're going to be doing that shortly let's bring that blue in again every time you have a little corner like a little crook that's a great place to add some blue over here we're going to add some more white and gray over here and in here oops my paper's going all over the place here's the gray and here and more white a little bit of blue and white over here on top of these berries with the gray over here now we're going to come over here and I was wondering would it be kind of fun to put sort of that pink color inside the heart I might do that as a subtle like fill it in with white but then maybe just subtly put a little bit of pink in there with the gray to kind of show off this pretty heart area and then maybe a little blue at the base of the heart just to show it off a little so you really sense this special little shape hiding in the picture like that a little bit more of the snow over here on top of here over here so we're going to get in there with the gray. Again, lightly swirling it on top of the white wherever we put the snow. Over here a little bit. Over here a little bit. Okay. Now don't worry about this. I have a trick for getting rid of that. If you feel like, oh, I'm not happy. I still see that line because I'm not happy with it, but I have a trick that we're going to use at the very end to get rid of that so it's not even going to be an issue. So just hang on and you will see how that is done moving forward. Okay, let's stop right here and we will move on to our sky. Our sky is going to be more grays, more light blues, and a slightly darker gray. So I'm going to put these ones aside, bring out a darker gray, and I will walk you through how to do your sky in just a moment. Okay, so we are at the sky portion of our picture. Then we have a little surprise at the end. So I'm going to tell you what you'll need for that surprise. If you have some white paint and a nail brush, we're going to give it a beautiful, soft, snowy feel. Uh, by splattering a mist of white paint on here. So if you want to, after we finish the sky, stop the video, get yourself a little white paint like on a piece of foil. I'm talking about like half a tablespoon, not much white paint at all, and a little nail brush or a scrub brush or an old, old toothbrush. We will do a little splatter technique and we can take care of that areas, any areas you don't like where the snow looks, we can put a little paint on our finger and just dab it right over and fix it up. So anyway, let's move on to the sky. I'm actually going to start with this pale periwinkle blue 
and we're gonna fill the sky lightly, very, very lightly with that periwinkle blue. Very, very pale blue. We will be taking some grays on top, but we're gonna start with a very, very light layer of blue. Remember, we want the cardinal, the berries, the branches to be the star of this picture, but we definitely want to show off the snow and the sky is gonna be a beautiful backdrop for all that snow on the branches, the bright red berries, and of course the bright red bird. So when you're coloring around the snow areas, snow meaning on top of the branches, try not to get too much blue in there. We wanna keep some whiteness there. We don't wanna really get a lot of it the blue in there. We want to know where the snow is, but we don't really want to put the snow in there. So let's just put a light, light layer of this blue that we were using earlier with the snow in between the branches, around the branches, around the bird in a nice light layer. Light layer. There we go. And I'm using very small circular strokes to fill in. And don't worry if you can turn your page around to make it easier to fill in areas. That is absolutely fine. Whatever works for you. I like to just turn my paper so that I can get right up to the edges, right up to the branches, right up to the snow. And then we're going to get back up here and there. So we have our blue in. Now we're going to go in and we're actually going to start to layer some heavier gray to give it almost a gray sky look. But we want that blue showing too also. So you don't want to go too heavy. You want a nice layer of gray to make it a gray blue sky, but with the blue showing through. So again, I'm taking this medium gray, going over my picture, but allowing that blue. If you really like the blue, you could just leave it blue too. But I'm playing with layers here, and I really do like the gray. So I'm putting that over the blue, and just working my way around again, the large areas circular strokes, very lightly applying it. But again, you decide if you prefer the blue just on its own and don't want that gray, leave it off. I think once we add that white snow splatter, it's gonna make everything pop beautifully. And I think you'll really like the end result Let's get in here, fill this pit. Remember where your snow is so you don't get too much heavy gray on it. You want to keep those snow patches visible. And again, I'll show you some easy techniques for popping out the white of the snow as soon as we finish with this 
gray application on top of the blue. Okay, and we'll come down here. Quickly, quickly get some gray in there. I can still see my snow. That heavier color pencil is still gonna make that snow stand out, so I wouldn't worry too much about it disappearing. I'm gonna bring it right out in just a moment. Okay, so we have our sky blocked in. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a combination of splattering and a little maybe fingertip pressing to bring out bits of the white snow. So if you have paint, I suggest you put a little bit of paint on a foil sheet. Um, if you're worried about getting your hands dirty, you can put um, one of these little disposable gloves on. It'll also keep your hands clean when you're splattering. And we're gonna do the finishing touches for your beautiful winter cardinal. See you in a minute. Get your supplies together and then I'll get you started. Okay, I have decided to put some gloves on my hands and I have some paint on the foil. And I decided, you know, you can either use your fingers to uh, dab a little bit of paint in like that, or just get a thin brush or a Q-tip even. And I want you to just go in here and dab paint right on top of those gray areas where you would like to see the snow, like this, all over your picture where you think the snow should be accumulating in the picture, maybe over here in the little crook of the branch, Maybe on the side of this branch here, coming in, a little crook there. And you can touch up that area that maybe you weren't thrilled with. I know I wasn't thrilled with mine, so I'm just gonna touch it up with a little paint there. And you're just going to put the paint all over wherever you want. So if you wanna stop the video here and spend some time putting the paint on, you can do that. Now what I'm gonna do though now is I'm gonna introduce the second part where you can take a scrub brush, a toothbrush, this is just a nail brush to create a really soft splatter of snow over your cardinal picture and I think you're really gonna like the results. So watch what I do, I'm gonna take, remember I just took a tiny bit of paint, this is like not even a tablespoon, maybe a teaspoon. I'm gonna rub the bristles so that the bristles have this nice white tips of paint here on the edge. I'm gonna hold it upside down. And when you rub it, you wanna bring your hand towards your body so that, watch, it's just going to splatter. I'm just sort of scratching the bristles. I'll get a little more. I have a little bit on the bird now. And I'm gonna put some more in the trees in the background. I don't want a ton of paint. I just want a little bit of paint just to give it that kind of wintry feel. So you do this as much as you feel fit, see fit. And I like it. I like that there's some snow on the bird, there's some snow in the branches, and I'm gonna stop there. So then when you're done, you just take off your gloves, throw them away, clean your brush, clean your nail brush, and you have a beautiful, cardinal in winter drawing. I hope you enjoyed the program with me today. I know I enjoyed working with you on it and see, it showed you how even when the art teacher herself screws up, you can kind of touch things up with a little brush. You can hide mistakes. You can blend them in. A little snow frost changes the whole look of everything. So thank you for joining me today. This is Doris Venter of Library Arts. Stay creative and I hope to see you soon.